name. Thomas is the Noel Sankara. Born 21st December 1949. Country. Burkina Faso. Spouse. Mariam Sankara. Children. August Sankara and Philip Sankara. Assassinated 15 October 1987. Welcome to today's edition of What Could Have Been. At 35, Thomas Isdor Noel Sankara was brought in as the president after a military coup and as expected of every true Pan-Africanist. Once he became the president, Sankara declared the objectives of the democratic and popular revolution to be primarily concerned with the task of eradicating corruption, fighting environmental degradation, empowering women, and increasing access to education and health care, and of course, with the bigger goal of eliminating imperial domination. As the president, Sankara successfully implemented programs that boosted the number of women holding governmental posts, significantly reduced infant mortality, increased literacy rate, and school attendance. This good man, Africa's Che Guevara, was committed to continental unity and self sufficiency for his people through the nationalization of Burkina Faso's mineral wealth and precious metal. He was assassinated on 15th October 1987 by the external power, but not without the help of Felix Ufebuani and his very good frenemy, Blaise Compaori, and a few others. Years later, in April 2021, a military court in Burkina Faso indicted former President Blaise Compaori and 13 co-conspirators for the murder of Thomas Sankara. What could have been? What could have been if Africa's Che Guevara was not assassinated? What could have been if the West had left Sankara to finish his good work? Now, take a moment with me as we reflect on the following big 18. During his tenure, he vaccinated 2.5 million children against meningitis, yellow fever, and measles in a matter of weeks. He initiated a nationwide literacy campaign, increasing the literacy rate from 13% in 1983 to 73% in 1987. He planted over 10 million trees to prevent desertification. He built roads and the railway to tie the nation together without foreign aid. He appointed females to high governmental positions, encouraged them to work, recruited them into the military, and granted pregnancy leave during education. He outlawed female genital mutilation, forced marriages, and polygamy in support of women's rights. He sold off the government fleet of Mercedes cars and made the Renault 5 the cheapest car sold in Burkina Faso at that time the official service car of the ministers. He reduced the salaries of all public servants, including his own, and forbade the use of government chauffeurs and first-class airline tickets. He redistributed land from the feudal landlords and gave it directly to the peasants. Wheat production rose in three years from 1,700 kilograms per hectare to 3,800 kilograms per hectare making the country food self-sufficient. He opposed foreign aid, saying that he who feeds you controls you. He spoke in forums like the Organization of African Unity against continued neocolonialist penetration of Africa through Western trade and finance. He called for a united front of African nations to repudiate their foreign debt. He argued that the poor and exploited did not have an obligation to repay money to the rich and the exploiting. In Ouagadougou, 
Sankara converted the Amis Provision Store into a state-owned supermarket, open to everyone, the very first supermarket in the country. He forced civil servants to pay one month salary to public projects. He refused to use the air conditioning in his office on the grounds that such luxury was not available to anyone but a handful of Burkina Bays. As president, he lowered his salary to $450 a month and limited his possessions to a car, four bikes, three guitars, a fridge, and a broken freezer. A motorcyclist himself, he formed an all-women motorcycle personal guard. He required public servants to wear a traditional tonic woven from Burkina Bay cotton and sewn by Burkina Bay craftsmen. The reason being to rely upon local industry and identity rather than foreign industry and identity. When asked why he didn't want his portrait hung in public places, as was the norm for other African leaders to date, Sankara replied, there are seven million Thomas Sankaras. Now, what could have been if Sankara was not assassinated? Surely, who could have added to that list? Instead of being dubbed one of the poorest nations today, Burkina Faso could have become one of the richest countries today. Having increased literacy rate, he would have liberated and empowered an important number of the masses, which would have pulled many out of poverty, increased industrialization and employment levels. A great number of these same educated people would have been able to say no to the foreign power that has plundered their wealth and impoverished them. Having been against continued neocolonialist penetration of Africa through Western trade and finance, Burkina Faso today would have been able to keep at bay France, which is believed to have done the dirty job of assassinating Sankara and also preventing countries like Canada and France from enslaving and impoverishing the Burkina Bays. The seven million Thomas Sankaras would have been able to stop the present Canadian imperialism and the underdevelopment of Burkina Faso. Considering that he redistributed land from the federal landlords and gave it directly to the peasants, the present day tobacco mine, owned by Toronto based High River Gold, would not have been established. And of course, there would be no expropriation of peasant land and therefore no destruction of traditional gold mining. Finally, Burkina Faso would have been truly free and rich as she would have continued to feed herself, oppose and reject foreign aid and automatically foreign control. To say the least, this could have been Ouagadougou. This could have been Bobo Diaulasso. This could have been Kudugu. This could have been Bamfora. And this and more could have been Le Pays des Hommes Intègres.